If you're unsure what you are looking at and didn't read the title of this video, go ahead and look at the logos up top. This is the A4 and this is the RP1. So basically what this is, is you're looking at something very identical. And that's because both Sony and Fujitsu dealt with the same OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, to build their devices. There are some subtle differences, like the white of the actual device is slightly different. This is more cream white and this is more stone white won't be very evident on the screen but that is definitely what is different about the front of the device. Aside from this pen ink mark that is on our review sample you will see the differences in the backing. The Sony on the left here is using a kind of hard rubber and it has kind of like a stone feel to it. There's a little bit of grit, like super high grit sandpaper. It's also beveled, which basically means there's like a little angle with a design and a, uh, a sharp edge and a plateau. Whereas the Fujitsu uses its own device made back and it's actually completely different and the logo is lasered on there it's not a sticker of any kind or anything like that although they do have an informative sticker down below that has all their model information it's actually a different backing altogether for all you techie guys that care about where things are made we sure do if you buy the sony dpt from japan you will actually get your device made in japan along with the quick start guide if you buy the usdm the united states States domestic market version it will be made in China this goes for the RP1 or the CP1 the DPT we have here on the left is the Japanese spec version so it is made in Japan however the Quaderno is using the same OEM as Sony but it is the USDM spec which means that the Quaderno is made in China even if you buy it from Japan which it's the only country you can get this there are a few more similarities. If you tap the top bar here, you'll notice that the Quaderno has a couple more things the Sony doesn't. You can click on Schedule, and this brings you to your Schedule folder. And it's a designated application that the Sony doesn't have. This has your Fujitsu schedule and any schedule you want to download and sideload onto here. You also have the Import from ScanSnap. If you look at the overlaying footage here, you'll see that ScanSnap is its own proprietary device made by Fujitsu. It will only work with this device because the Sony doesn't have that application loaded onto the device. Although these are both running Android, you can't download any Android apps, except if you buy the Sony DPT with Android that only Goody Reader sells, that one you can use Google Play. But these two out of the box, neither of them can run applications. The subtle differences continue over into the create new note, the templates. You will notice that they actually only have one page on the Sony, but the Fujitsu has two. And this is because you have the to-do list. Now, because these are running PDF, you can essentially just sideload in any PDF you want, be it a template PDF or a fully fledged PDF or just a blank white piece of paper PDF and just draw whatever you want on them. This is just here as a pleasantry. It's not make or break. Couple more things in the setting menu, you will see that the Sony has control server settings. So you can actually hook this up to a system. If you have a law firm or a medical institution or something that you want closed, this has that level of security. The Fujitsu actually doesn't have that. And you'll see that it says screen lock. Well, this has screen lock as well. They just bury it in the system settings. You will notice screen lock is right there. And from here, both devices can use the NFC that they have enabled and use key cards. So for example, someone that only has this key card can tap the device and it unlocks. Either that or you can just use a password. And yes, both of them do have the exact same storage, which is 11.09 gigabytes. Here's the PDF. They are identical in every way. They're the exact same screen, so there aren't going to be any differences in that regard. And you'll see in terms of speed, they're pretty much identical when turning pages of this PDF. And on said PDF, you can just go ahead and start making notes right away. You don't have to initiate any settings and you can use the highlight tool on both of them uh, as the pen is the exact same pen 
as well. Yes, the Fujitsu logoing is different and the Sony logoing is different, but again, they use the same OEM to make the pen at the same place. So the uh, model number will be different, but the actual core mechanics will be identical. So we're gonna open up the Fujitsu schedule right now. See it loaded the exact same. And this is interactive on both of these devices. Although this has a designated scheduler app because they're kind of pushing that. If you go to Fujitsu's website, you can download different schedulers. And actually we have the Fujitsu scheduler that we just threw on the Sony because we knew it would work. Uh, although the Fujitsu is kind of pushing it as their own kind of creation. And you can see both of these are interactable the same way. You can tap on something, you can make your notes and you can go back to the respective month and you can actually write on the calendar itself like that and make any notes you wish. So it's a good mix of it being completely interactable but at the same point doesn't restrict you to certain areas in which you can write. You can actually just write end to end, side to side. So that's very nice. The Fujitsu has one incredible advantage over the Sony and that is the fact that you can pinch and zoom with one hand and draw with the other. For example, on the Sony you can't pinch and zoom so what you'll have to do is tap in the center which both of these have the exact same UI at the top. You can click on the tap the circle area which you want to zoom. So for example, we'll go to the e-reader, zoom in there, and we can zoom in. It's quite nice. However, on the Fujitsu, we can do that or we can pinch and zoom and there's a percentage on the top corner there. And once we're there, we can move it around like so. It dithers away so it will allow you to move the image around nicely without rendering every uh, frame, which is very nice. And then you can zoom in to your heart's content upwards of a thousand percent. So once you're here, what you can do is make extremely fine details that you would not be able to achieve with the settings that they give you. And you can do the same thing on the Sony. Of course, we chose a different pen. We can choose whatever pen we want and make hairline details. And then once you zoom out or exit, you will see that you have these details that you could not have gotten with the five choices of pen thicknesses because this doesn't have pressure sensitivity. And you can do the same thing on here. You can exit out and there you have it. However, on the Fujitsu, you can use that capacitive control with your left hand and use the stylus with your right hand like so. And you are able to kind of use those in, in conjunction with each other and monitor and uh, regulate your percentage while you take your notes. So that's a really good system that they have in place. But in terms of the quality, the functionality and the available text augmentation and the drawing augmentation, they're identical. They have the same eraser size, pen thickness and color. And if you tap here, they have the same area selection, change document name, delete current page, etc. The Fujitsu Quaderna was not meant to be known as a white label device because it isn't. Yes, they both go to the same OEM, uh, again, original equipment manufacturer, to build their devices, but many, this is common industry practice. Cell phone does it, uh, appliances do it, washing machines, clothing companies do it, car companies do it. A lot of device manufacturers do this. It's common practice in industries to use available things that are already developed to make it your own. And Fujitsu has done some subtle differences, everything we've mentioned in the video, and they're breathing new life into the note-taking realm. So this is a comparison between the Sony DPT RP1 and the Quaderno A4 13.3 inch, both of these. This is a 2020 device, this is a 2016 device. There have been some moderate upgrades on this, nothing substantial, but this is just showing you what you get with both of these devices. For goodyreader.com, this is Peter.